Our next uh, uh, speaker um, is uh, St Dr. Stephen Ball, Research Fellow at the Pre-Hospital Resuscitation and Emergency Care Research Unit. I was a bit nervous when I was reading about him because when he was at school, he would keep asking questions and uh, wouldn't be satisfied till he got an answer that really answered the question. And his fellow students would get a bit irritated because uh, he would uh, keep on asking and they'd be, the class would go on and on and on. We have a timeline here. Uh, but anyway, you're speaking to us, we're not, uh, you're not asking the questions to, today. Um, now, it's a fascinating career that Stephen has, uh, from zoologist to botanist, and now to you. Uh, he's had a, a really a very wide range of experience, but currently he's research fellow at the Pre-Hospital Resuscitation and Emergency Care Research Unit, known as Pre-Crew, Pre uh, and of course Prof Professor Judith Finn helped encourage him in, in, in that direction at uh, Curtin University. He works on the NH and MRC partnership project, uh, improving ambulance dispatch to time critical emergencies with the Curtin University and St. John Ambulance West Australia and other partners. And the research focuses on a range of factors, including how emergency calls are categorized and prioritized for dispatch and what dispatch recognition means for patient care outcomes. Please welcome Dr. Stephen Ball. Right, thank you very much. I'll, I'll attempt to uh, keep us to time with with afternoon tea. Um, I know we're, we're running a little over at the moment. So, um, yeah, today I wanted, I'm under the topic of AD um, first responder programs. So I'm going to talk about what geographic variation in response times for out of hospital cardiac arrest means for that issue. And in a, I'm treating the issue of, of first responder programs broadly, so I'm including the concept of community. Uh, response, especially with the advent of apps that help help to enable that as a resource. So, um, so as a bit of background, so survival from out of hospital cardiac arrest uh, decreases by 10% per minute without resuscitation. So, in that context, the 8 to 13 minutes that it takes on average for uh, code one or priority one responses in Australia across Australian states and territories is a big issue, and. Um, community-based first responder programs can help to bridge this really significant time gap. And the question that we asked was where could this be most important? So pre-crew work closely with St John Ambulance Western Australia and this question came from, the, um, started with the medical director of St John Ambulance, Paul, Paul Bailey, asking us to look at regional variation. So our aims were to look at uh, first of all, to measure regional variation in ambulance response times to out-of-hospital cardiac arrest across the state, <clears throat> to assess service provision and response times in relation to spatial dispersion of out-of-hospital out of hospital cardiac arrest cases, to compare response times between career paramedic centres and volunteer centres, I'll talk about that distinction a bit more in a minute, and to determine the proximity of cardiac arrest cases to population centres as a um, uh, looking at the potential for, for community to be involved with this. So just the data and the system, so this is Western Australia, it's um, a vast area, two, two and a half million square kilometres and two and a half million people. Now that two, two million of those are within the Perth metro area, so basically you've got half a million people across that two and a half million square kilometre area. St John Ambulance Western Australia use an integrated model to, to provide care across this area. So within the Perth Metro, it's paid paramedics is, is, the, is the care that's provided. Um, outside of the metro area, there's one centre in Bunbury, which is also exclusively paid paramedics. Beyond that, it's either um, there's paid paramedics in combination with uh, volunteer ambulance officers, and then there are some centres which are purely am, uh, volunteer ambulance officers. So these are, these are the, the volunteers, as I'll refer to them, are, are highly trained. They, have, they respond with the same vehicles as the metro vehicles, um, and they're on ongoing clinical training. So um, there's about 4,000 or 3,700 3, of them across the state. So the, the data that we're looking at here is from the St John Ambulance uh, out-of-hospital cardiac arrest database, which is maintained at pre-crew. And we're looking at two years' data from 
2014 to 2015. And from an initial 4,500 cases, I excluded the paramedic witness arrests, cases where there was an advanced directive, and uh, excluded traumatic cardiac arrests, and there were some very small minor inclusions, so there were patients on an aeroplane and, and other, other uh, rare cases. So here's how the cases are distributed across the state, and you can see a large number in the metro. It's about 80%, which is pretty close to proportional to the population. And you can see that, that up in the far north there's small numbers of cases in the Kimberley, which is probably considered one of the most remote areas of, of, of Australia, um, that 39 cases over those two years. And this is looking, now we've got the variation in response time. So this is median response time to cases of cardiac arrest. So that's from the moment the call is answered to the arrival of an ambulance. And down in the metro, it's about between eight to nine minutes. The really interesting thing, well, a couple of inter really interesting things is the variation. So up in, the, up in the Kimberley, it's actually only nine minutes as well, almost as good as the metro. And uh, yet, yet we've got areas like the wheat belt, which have nearly 18 minutes median response time. So again, remember that 10% decline per, per minute in survival. Those 18 minutes are a major, a major issue. Um, so we wanted to understand this variation and, and to understand whether is it something that we just look at areas and say, hey, that could be improved, or are there inherent constraints about how things are, um, about the geography of cardiac arrest? Is, is the 18 minutes something we should accept or try and change? So, so with the wheat belt in mind as a focus area, uh, but looking at the whole system, here's this, this shows the distribution distribution of cases across the state. There's some slight jittering of locations just to preserve confidentiality, but not, not for the analysis side of things. And what you can see is the wheat belt as a region is a very dispersed set of cases. So the wheat belt is um, uh, farms, it has a lot of uh, small towns um, for historic reasons, uh, going back to the era of, um, you know, when, when basically sheep could be moved a day that was, that was the distance between towns. Um, and, and so those little towns still exist and that, and that population is very dispersed. And if you look right up in the, the, uh, up in the Kimberley though, you see that the cases are very highly concentrated within two centres, Broome and Kununurra. So even though you've got this really remote region, the cases are highly concentrated. So <clears throat> what we wanted to do is look at whether the, um, well, first of all, to say, okay, highly dispersed cases are, are a challenge for service delivery. It's not easy to cover, cover a region where cases are everywhere. So there's two conflicting aims of spatial coverage of ambulance services. One is spatial equality. Um, it would be nice if, if everywhere had the same, same response times. But against that, you've got, the, you've got to balance the fact that across the whole system, you want to save the most lives. So you want to put resources... Um, we're going to put the, the highest level resources where they are most needed. It might seem a, an obvious thing, but, but you know you don't put a you don't put a paid paramedic crew out in the middle of nowhere where there's not the cases because it could be placed better somewhere else. So it's the opportunity cost that we have to think of. And um, so then the question becomes, is the observed geographic variation in response times, is it reasonable in the context of this question of optimal coverage? So what I did was to look at if you could cover the population optimally with a, with a um, knowing that there's variation in, 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 uh, in, in the way the service is provided in terms of paid crews and volunteer ambulance officers. I said, okay, if you could create a, a statewide grid of of, the, of cells, 20 by 20 grid cells, and, and, and basically treat these as a potential service area, where, where would you put them? So we wanted to find the minimum set of cells that would contain 95% of all cases in the state. Initially ignoring health region boundaries during this optimization, but then go and look at, for each health region, how they fell. So did, 
how did their coverage of cardiac arrest cases compare to other, other regions. So this is showing if we had 90% of the cases in the state covered, this is where you'd put the cells. Um, and if you covered 95, this is where you'd put the additional ones. So um, it covers, this is showing the southwest part of the state. Shows, it, of course, you cover the metro area because it contains high densities of cardiac arrest cases. And then some of the regional towns Basically, we're interested in where are those ones that are left out, the ones that are is relatively isolated cases. And really interestingly is the wheat belt has about, uh, a, you would cover a very small proportion, so 41% of the cases if you went through this optimization process. Compared to, say, the Kimberley at the top of the table, you would hit the 95% coverage because you basically put a cell on Broome and a cell on Kananara. So if we look at that in relation to where, uh, the, um, where the actual paramedic centres are, uh, paid paramedic centres are, it's a very close concordance. So those, those cells that cover 95% of the cases, um, it captures 47 of the 48 paid uh, career paramedic centres in the state. And the, the other triangles are where the other centres are, the volunteer ambulance officer centres. And um, so if we look at how that predicted coverage uh, relates to the, uh, the uh, proportion of cases within a state, within a region that receive paramedic, uh, career paramedic coverage, um, you can see this relationship being quite strong. So the wheat belt is the lowest in both what you'd predict and what you observe. And here, this shows that relationship here as a, um, as a graph, so on the, on the y-axis you see the proportion of cardiac arrest cases attended by career paramedics and on the, on the x-axis you see the coverage that you would expect based on the, the, uh, the model of optimal coverage across the system. So the wheat belt is, is low in both cases, it stands out. Uh, and again if you look at, so this is looking at response time, median response times and you can see that the the high response times for the wheat belt are strongly related to what you would predict if you were to co cover the system optimally. So then the question kind of shifted to saying, okay, what there must there's um, the the difference between uh, paid paramedic crews and volunteers seems to be a significant one in terms of response times. So this is picking the five regions of the state that we had enough data for in both categories, and you can see there that. The volunteer-only centres in the orange are all high, have higher response times than than the paid paramedic crews. So then we wanted to know: okay, is that is that an issue of um, of distance that these crews are from the cases because they're out in in the regions, or is it or is it something else? So if we look at the the average distance for these regions for volunteer uh, for volunteer ambulance responses. We see that uh, this column here, the median distance, shows that on average they're actually very close. So this is where the, the, the distance between the depot and the cardiac arrest case. Uh, the, the map on the right hand side shows in the triangles are the, where the depots are and the dots are where the cardiac arrest cases are. That's the scale bar on the bottom is 10 kilometres. So you can see they're very close to the depots. So even the wheat belt has, has an average distance of less than a kilometre. So what, what it's pointing to is that it's not getting from the depot to the case that's the, the limiting issue. It's not that these cases are out on isolated farms. They tend to be very close to depots. And it's probably just the inherent constraints of these, these ambulance officers being volunteers. They have to go and get the vehicle they have, and then respond. So it's, it's this clash between the, 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 the needs of a cardiac arrest case and and also the, the conflict of having to go there with an ambulance from a volunteer position. So then we wanted to say, okay, if it's, if it's not the distance between, if, if they're actually close cases, does this point to the communities being a resource that's untapped into yet um, or, or shows a lot of potential for? So we looked at where the towns are based on the Australian Bureau of Statistics categorisation of, of uh, urban locations uh, or urban um, 
centres and population locations. So these are centres that have a population of, 20, of 200 or more people. So that's in the, on the right hand side we've got in green, that's the population centres and we've got on, in purple the locations of cardiac arrests. And it turns out that if you look across those three regions where volunteers are a big part of the service, um, about 71% of cardiac arrest cases are either in or within these population centres. So basically there's a huge resource on the doorstep of these cases that take, say in the, in the case of the wheat belt, 18, an average of 18 minutes to arrive to, yet they're only one kilometre from, from town or less. So, and in addition, if you look at the far right hand column, we see that there's um, not huge numbers of, of, of these population centres in these regions. We're not talking hundreds and hundreds. In the case of the wheat belt, it's only, it's 42 centres. So if we can set up, especially with the use of apps these days, uh, and Western Australia has a first responder app, um, push those things in, in these regions and make AEDs available within these towns, there's a real potential for this to be um, something that works in combination with the, the integrated system in Western Australia. So just the um, take home messages from this are that there's large variation in response times to cardiac arrest in Western Australia. This is very consistent with how you would optimally coverage, how you optimally cover cardiac arrest cases if you were to, if you were to put resources where they're most needed. Um, and the spatial equality of response times is just constrained by this need to save the most lives across the system. In regional Western Australia, response times for volunteer centres are slower than career centres. This is probably related to the, the inherent constraints of, of what, how that system works. And, um, and this is despite the short distances of the cases. So most cardiac arrest cases occur in or very close to population centres, despite, these big, despite them being dispersed at a broad region. And therefore, we, we think there's a significant opportunity for community-based first response to help with this whole problem. Thank you.